Hi everybody, this is Matthew Pose of Pose Acoustics. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about loudness. Um, so I found something out. Now, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I like knew this and somehow it was like in one ear, out the other, didn't pay attention to it. Um, so many of you had pointed out that you don't listen to movies at reference levels, which we've talked about that and I understand why. Many of you said that you find it way too loud. When I recently went to the Trinov event, they were listening at around minus 20, or even I think my, I think it was like minus 24 when I first came. I made them turn it up. Um, but they weren't listening all that loud. Although with music, which is, there's, music is a crapshoot. Uh, minus 20 with music doesn't mean the same thing as it does with movies because more than likely the music was much more compressed and, and louder. So, um, so basically, uh, there's, I think there's a reason for it. And I found something out that, like I said, I, I knew it and yet somehow like never really registered with me what was going on. So I had worked uh, on a, a studio with a client and it was an Atmos studio, professional for, for properly done, uh, you know, major movies, uh, been run through Dolby, the whole deal. And when we were talking about this, we talked about how everything needs to be set to reference levels. All thing needs to be properly calibrated. But then he mentioned to me something about how there's presets for different um, mixes. And so you've got the hero mix. That's like the main mix. So think of it as it's sort of a rough mix of everything. There's a lot of notes that go along with it. But the, overall, everything kind of gets mixed in the hero mix the way it's supposed to be. There's then, I wouldn't even necessarily call them stems. There's like, but there's like a splitting point at that point. And so part of it goes to uh, the cinema mix. That's for commercial cinema stuff. It's typically Atmos. It, off of the Atmos, there may be stems to the other stuff. So that was the other thing that was mentioned to me very recently is that um, sometimes these cinema mixes actually get turned. So the cinema mix is Atmos. And then if it goes to IMAX, I believe DTSX is what's used even in the commercial version of IMAX as the actual surround encoding format. And so they use the Atmos mix to become a DTS mix, or in some cases it could be an RO mix, meaning it never gets straight from the hero mix in like a raw form to the others. Atmos is the intermediate. And that's just because the workflow of the studio is Atmos. This is probably not true universally everywhere, but this is what's true in the US for major studios. So then it goes to residential. Now I had been told originally that you have near field mixes, which refers to the streaming mixes. And, and as I understood it, near field was referring to the fact that most people are watching movies like this on a phone. So that's near field, listening on headphones or the speakers built into it or on a tablet and that they're not typically watching it on a TV or on um, a large home theater like this. And so the Atmos mixes actually get changed I had, so what I had heard was that often those uh, um, near field mixes sorry, um, are done at a, a different reference level. So instead of being 85, it might be 82. That was the only number I ever had heard. So then recently it had been brought to my attention that actually Netflix, uh, Disney, Amazon, et cetera, for their st streaming services have required something else. Now I knew TV was done differently. So apparently what's happened is they've tried to make TV levels and movie levels the same. So one was brought up a little, the TV stuff, and movies was brought down a lot. And so now it's not 85, it could be 82, but it's probably going to be 80 or 78 or 76 or 75. There's actually a range and they're all well below 85 at what is acceptable, but it must be mixed at this lower level. Then there's something else. Whereas with the cinema mix, the peaks can go all the way up to zero dBFS. On these near field mixes, they want you to put in a minus 2.3, 2.4 limiter dBFS for the peaks, which allows it that, that'll cause it to peak at around minus two dBFS. So you just, so just to make this clear, they're mixing at a lower volume level. They're getting rid of two dBs of dynamic range. Then they're doing something else. They're changing the LUFs from minus 31 to minus 25, 26, something like that. And there's a bit of variation in there too, meaning they've made it louder. So they're taking the voice level, they're kind of raising it up in the mix. So you guys complain about my YouTube mixes sometimes, which is because they're often kind of in between a cinema mix minus 31 
and a YouTube mix, which is supposed to be somewhere between minus 12 and minus 6. They're typically in that minus 20 something range, which is more similar to what streaming services do, but not what YouTube does. So the closer to zero it is, the louder it is, but the less dynamic range you would have. Something that's that we talk about loudness, that's what that means. So if you go from minus 31 to minus 26, that's a 5 dB difference in loudness. So that what they're doing is they're making these and also, and as I said, you lose dynamic range by doing that. So they're compressing it. So what they're doing is they're taking these streaming mixes and they're compressing them. They're making them louder, not louder like to your ear it's louder, like you turn it up, louder like the average level of everything is closer to the peak level. So the ratio between average and peak is being decreased, giving a general perception of louder. So remember what the loudness wars was about compressing the crap out of music until there was not a very big difference between average and peak. And so overall, the music sounds louder. If you listen to a really old or a very low compress uh, compressed music versus very high compression music, you're going to find the low compression music or those older recordings sound a lot less loud, but they have way more dynamic range. The crest factor is higher in the recording. So what they're doing with movies now is they're compressing them, they're making them louder, they're getting rid of some of the dynamic range, and then they're, they're doing this all at a lower level. While I thought there still was a disc and Kaleidoscape version that that wasn't true for. Now I've reached out to Kaleidoscape, they haven't yet answered. If they watch this video, I'm still waiting for your answer. So I'm trying to find out if they, they might get their own mix. They kind of say they do, but it's not been very clear. The impression I'm getting from the folks I've talked with is that basically you've got your hero mix. It splits off, as I said, cinema, that's 85 dB reference, and residential. But that's it. In the residential, there are stems. The stems go off to all these other formats, but all of them are going to have the minus 2 dB uh, limiter put in. They're going to have the higher LUFS level, minus 26 or so and they're going to have uh, a lower mastering level. They're not going to go and redo these for every one of these at different mastering levels. It's just going to go to a different dubbing stage already set to a preset for a given mastering level. And then that's it. And everything else is done downstream. So what that means is that Kaleidoscape and discs, even though they do sound better and they do have, but that's because they have wider dynamic range because they're not being compressed as much and they're not, and they're using lossless compression versus lossy compression in the audio stream. So they do sound better. Don't get me wrong, but they're not cinema mixes. And it raised a point that I hadn't thought about. Um, so officially the standard is you should be uh, setting your system up the way cinema systems are set up, meaning that they should be set so that a signal that in theory is supposed to be minus 20, it's actually like minus 18.5 dBFS um, pink noise signal when sent to your speakers equals 85 dB of output. So that's making it so a particular digital signal level equals a particular loudness in the room. You set that up, and then when you play recordings, it's supposed to roughly be equal then to what was intended by the uh, studio. Except that's not true based on what I just told you, right? Because they're actually encoding these things, mastering them at 80 dB or 76 dB, something like that. So they're listening at a lower level, um, makes me think that we should be doing the same thing, either turning the volume down to match it or actually having a preset that has been calibrated to a lower level, just like they use. Um, but that we shouldn't be using an 85 dB calibration and then sending it to zero dBFS to launch. And the reason for that is because what you're listening to now is too loud and probably would be irritating and possibly more on the dangerous side. Um, the danger side of it, I can test. So I'm kind of curious to play around with this a little bit. I'm going to talk about that in a second, just a little bit, but I just want to mention that on the too loud side, I'm now starting to think, because even I have listened to movies before and been like, that seems too loud. And then I turn it down and it's like, yeah, it's supposed to be reference level. I know it's supposed to be, but it just sounds better at minus five or minus six or something like that. Well, if the whole thing was, as I said, made louder, because there is variation there. So certain recordings could be could have been made way louder. So if, if the movie was made louder, compressed, and mastered at a lower level, probably what I was doing was listening to it 5 or 6 dB or more too loud. And so it makes sense that you guys think this is too loud. It probably is too loud. 
Um, I'd like to get to the bottom of this, so I'm not telling you that what I'm giving you is fact at the moment. It's um, based on some facts, and then there's this other side of it that I don't have an answer to yet. I've asked other people in the industry that I work with what they think. And the answer I keep getting is, well, but the standard from like Dolby, for instance, remains that you calibrate the system to 85. And all we can really do is stick with these standards. To break away from the standards runs the risk of inventing a new way of doing something based on our own opinions, but maybe misunderstanding the facts. And so uh, we need to understand the facts better before we come up with a new way. But I'm kind of thinking that this might be something we need to reconsider. So we'll see where that goes, but I'm starting to come around to this idea that uh, reference level may not be reference level. It may actually be five or six to be above reference level due to all these little issues. But it's also kind of depressing to me to realize that we don't have access to anything even close to a cinema mix. I knew they were different, but this is a lot more different than I realized. The notion that they're cutting off 2 dB of dynamic range, that they're compressing it and making everything louder, and that they're doing this all at a lower volume level means that we're not getting something that allows us to recreate in our home what you get in a cinema. And while the speakers can be made to sound better and the acoustics can be more optimized and the bass can be better, the source material is worse universally. And that sucks. I really would have liked that not to be true. Um, I will say, I think if we were to put enough pressure on studios to fix this, there could be solutions to this. The problem is, the reason why they're doing this is because we all put pressure on them to do this. A lot of people complained about movies being too loud. A lot of people complained about them sounding lousy on their tablets and TVs. And a lot of this was a reaction to trying to make something that plays back better on the types of devices typically used. And this is not normal. So to get access to something that's designed to make this type of a room sound good is tricky. But maybe Kaleidoscape, for instance, can do it. Uh, I would be very curious if that was a possibility. Uh, maybe they already are, and that would be a, a reason to go with something like that. But my understanding, at least, is discs are not getting this. Uh, none of the streaming services are getting anything. In fact, they're, they're specifically requiring all these changes to be made in order for it to be sent to them. Um, so I'll keep you updated as I learn more. It's probably going to be a little bit of time for me to do some stuff on this uh, and learn more, but I'll let you guys know once I learn more. Now, uh, danger. Um, one of the guys at the event that I was at made a comment about how we were listening to it dangerously loud, and it raises an issue. I've mentioned it before. Movies are not as dangerously loud as people think. A lot of people have this idea that 85 dB can cause hearing damage, 100 dB can cause hearing damage, 120 dB, it's like instantaneous hearing damage. You need to understand that that's a very misleading way to look at it. Very, very sharp transients, so very, very short, peaky transients do not cause instant hearing loss. It would have to be sustained at some level to cause instant hearing loss. So one of the things that we have for addressing this, now admittedly, it's all based on on like OSHA safety standards is that we can uh, calculate dosage. And the thing that causes long-term hearing damage is actually more related to the sustained uh, amount of uh, loud noise that you hear over long periods of time. And OSHA standards are admittedly primarily based on the notion that somebody has enough hearing to be considered workable by the time they retire. It's not really about minimizing hearing loss uh, to like the point of zero or like a tiny little bit. It's like, you're gonna have hearing loss. We just wanna make sure the hearing loss isn't excessive. That's sort of the general view. So the dosage is based on the idea that you're getting below the maximum amount that you can get in a day before you're gonna cause excessive hearing loss over your lifetime. And the louder the sound is over the louder the period of time, the more quickly you use up that dosage you're allowed to get. So studies have been done by a number of people um, on dosage, where they took devices and they stuck it in movie theaters or they stuck it in dubbing stages and they would play back an entire movie and they would record the dosage. And typically, the numbers were under 10%. In fact, typically they were under 5%. And most kids' family movies were like under 2%. So what that means is that you would have to watch 
an awful lot of movies, or you would have to live in a generally very noisy environment for a movie to substantially contribute to you having hearing loss. But the peaks in the movies, for instance, are not causing instantaneous hearing loss. And the peaks in the movies are not causing you to exceed your max dosage for the day in one movie. You're not even coming close because those transients are so short in the movie. So I actually would like to repeat that study looking at this loudness issue because that is one of the problems with compression and turning the volume up as you increase your dosage because the average level of loudness that you're getting now has increased. So I'm kind of curious to watch at different levels Minus, uh, well, I'll just, I guess, play with some different options here. So if my if 70 versus, so 15, so minus 15, so we'll probably do something like that. Minus 15, minus 10, minus 5, and 0. Play a whole movie through. I'll record it. Interestingly enough, REW can actually calculate dosage for you and look at all the SPL over time. Um, I've got another, I've got the NIOSH app that can do it, and I can connect a, a high-quality microphone to my phone. <coughs> excuse me, through USB, and that will work. So I can use one of my better USB mics um, with one of my sound interfaces. Not USB mics, sorry. I can use one of my better XLR mics with my sound interface connected to the phone and the NIOSH app. And so I could actually probably do a couple of different ways and get all this and calculate out the percentage dosage you get for a whole movie. Personally, I'm very curious what will come out at these different levels and see if the changes they're making would make it so that if you listen louder, if you do in fact get a higher dosage, and if it's higher than what you see in commercial cinemas. So we know what commercial cinemas are. Um, be very interesting to see what we get with residential stuff. Wouldn't it be interesting if the changes they made to the residential stuff actually made it more dangerous given how we listen? That's actually the implications here. All right, so thanks again for watching. I hope you guys found this interesting. You may have stumbled upon some interesting controversy, right?